Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson and Chris Lewicki is here with me now, the president of Planetary Resources. Uh, nice to see you again, Chris. Nice to see you again, Bridget. Now you are uh, working on a project to mine asteroids. So tell us a little bit about the project first and then tell us where it stands now. Well, Planetary Resources is looking to expand our resource base beyond the Earth. Uh, mining has served us quite well here for some time, and as we actually start to develop the technology to explore space, we're going to need resources out there. And uh, we'd like to be the business to help provide it to everyone. Now, you're not coming at this blindly either. You have an extensive background with NASA. I do. So, uh, 10 years ago tomorrow, uh, I was working with my team when I was at NASA, landing the Opportunity rover on Mars. It was flight director uh, when we were doing that, and I brought along to our company, many friends and team members from NASA who have a lot of experience building robots and robotic geologists and sending them out into space. So clearly a lot of experience. Maybe walk us through what some of the hurdles would be though to mining asteroids. It sounds like there would be a number of things that need to be overcome. Well, certainly. So this is something that 10, 15 years ago, I don't think would have been quite ready, but we certainly feel today that it is. We're discovering asteroids and objects in our solar system faster than we ever have. Uh, a more than a thousand near-Earth asteroids a year are being discovered. And the exciting thing is that about half of them actually are closer to us than the surface of the moon is. So what would be the purpose of it? How would you go about, I mean, what is the kind of rea reality of, of using asteroids and how would it be done? Well, asteroids have a number of extremely useful resources on them. As we ex go into space and as we establish frontiers, it's kind of good to have material that you can live off the land, so to speak. If you lumber your jack, you bring along your ax, uh, you know, if you're a miner, you bring along your pick. Uh, we're going to go out to the asteroids and extract water. Uh, water sounds something pretty simple. It's pretty abundant here on Earth. We don't need to bring it back. But in space, it costs thousands and thousands of dollars to send a liter of water into space. So if we can get it from space, uh, that's something where there is a, a really much a growth industry. So what kind of technology then are you experimenting with to, to get at this water? Well, we're a prospecting company today. We're developing robotic capability to go out to a near-Earth asteroid and survey it and figure out its mineral content, figure out how much water is in it, and really do a feasibility analysis. Do what the mineral industry does today in reducing risk and understanding the value of the resource and the ability to extract uh, that commodity from that resource and, and bring it to a market. should have asked my question a bit clearer, I guess, is what kind of technology would be used for this then? Uh, things that, thing that people are probably familiar with today, a lot of the mining industry on Earth uses satellite data, visible imagery, uh, spectroscopy, uh, both visible spectroscopy and even things like X-ray spectroscopy. There's handheld tools here on the, the conference floor today. We'll use those same technologies out in proximity to an asteroid, but much of it we can do without ever leaving the Earth. Because the asteroid is out there in the vacuum of space, we can often know more about that asteroid than you can about an ore body 500 meters below your feet. And some people might say, you know, this is way too far-fetched. How would you respond to that? Well, I think all things were once science fiction, uh, but uh, overnight, on, uh, in some cases, they turn into reality. This is something that I think we're ready for. We have the technology to do it. Uh, we have a number of uh, wealthy people and folks who have invested in the company and backing us, uh, folks like Larry Page and Eric mm -hmm. Schmidt, uh, the uh, founder and the executive chairman at Google. Richard Branson joined us in the last year. Uh, and even uh, companies who support the mining industry like Bechtel Corporation has invested in our company this last year. And you've also raised some money through Kickstarter. So why go that way? Well, Kickstarter was a project. We had the, uh, the ARCID Kickstarter. I have a, a patch with me today. Uh, that our backers got. Uh, we had so much and we still continue to be blessed by just some incredible interest in our company and the activities that we're doing and people wanted to participate. They wanted to get engaged and be able to help us in what we're doing. So we actually tried th a thing on Kickstarter where people could participate in our exploration uh, and in some cases actually put their eye on the telescopes that we're making. So we turned that project into something that is kind of our public engagement and getting public support for what we're doing. But we're also using it to solve some of our technology problems. We just signed an agreement with NASA, in fact, at the end of last year, where we're going to actually use citizen scientists to help us develop better algorithms to discover more asteroids. You brought along something else as well. That is a, a meteorite, or a yeah. piece of a meteorite, I guess. We also are blessed in that uh, we have about 50,000 samples maybe you could call it a core sample, of asteroids that we have here on Earth. Meteorites were once near-Earth asteroids until they crossed the Earth's pass. 
So we can analyze these and understand very well what asteroids are made out of and use this as kind of an analog as we go out and explore the asteroids themselves. So Chris, what is your time frame for this then? Well, we're making great progress. Uh, like I said, when we were here last year, we were uh, forming the company and getting it together. We're making progress on our technology roadmap. This summer, we're going to be launching uh, some of our technology experiments from the International Space Station, and that's the first steps towards our prospecting technology to go out to the asteroids themselves, and that's something we plan on doing in about two to three years' time from now. <clears throat> Do you have much interest from uh, the U.S. government or Canadian government in a project like this? We do. Certainly the information that we're developing and its use in science is of interest for the reasons why we have explored space for the past 50 years. But even the resource potential in space is something that is really becoming front and center and important. And also, to some extent, the, uh, the threat that asteroids represent. In the last year in Chelyabinsk, Russia, there was a case where we didn't see an asteroid coming, and unfortunately, 1,100 people were injured that day uh, because of the, the, uh, the impact of that asteroid and the effects that it created. But this is something where the mining technology to go out and identify, characterize, and ultimately extract resources from the asteroid can help us prevent things like that from happening in the future. This is a, a real departure from what you were doing at NASA. Um, it, tell me a little bit what that has been like, that transition for you. Well, in some ways, I think it's much the same as what we've been doing NASA and building on that 50 years of experience of exploring space, but certainly from an entrepreneurial standpoint and going after a resource and a business plan, uh, it's of course very different. We're motivated to be lean, to uh, think about the bottom line, think about the markets, and put together an efficient team to do this for very low cost. And what we've really found uh, engaging with the community um, kind of all around the planet is that uh, we probably have the capability to prospect and understand asteroid resources for about the same cost that it would cost to develop any new ore body here on Earth. Now, I also read that you're launching a spacecraft soon? Yes, we are. So, so tell this, me about that. this summer, our ARCID 3 spacecraft is going to be deployed from a Japanese module on the International Space Station out of the Kibo airlock. And uh, this is a small little spacecraft, but it really represents the brains of what we will use to prospect asteroids. And we'll follow this summer's launch with uh, many more in follow-on years, kind of the opportunity to release things, to try them out, to experiment, uh, and to be able to uh, kind of advance these things step-by-step step closer to our goal. What would you say is your biggest hurdle in the next 12 or 24 months? I think our biggest hurdle is making people realize that this is something that will happen sooner than everyone might think and get to the serious conversations of how can we go through a process where we can, for example, maybe do project type financing for the development of asteroid resources. Uh, this is something that the mining community, of course, has been operating under for decades, if not centuries. Uh, and we're looking really to use everything that has been developed already, and we're just doing it in a new pay place, maybe a new type of resource, uh, but a lot of the stuff can be adopted and adapted for use in space. So I think it's really just changing people's mindset to see that this is actually something that's going to be possible quite soon. Well, I really appreciate the update. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.